Right, in this lesson we're going to have a look at puddles. But we're going to have a look at several things involved with rain and the aftermath of rain. The point I want to make here is that with these four photographs you can see the colour of the puddle each time reflects the sky. Now here you can see what I've produced in effect is a tonal sketch on the canvas. Right, now you can see I've just put those background trees in. So that's all we need to do that for that now. The next thing I'm going to do is just continue bringing these fields down but in quite a bright colour because we're creating this atmosphere of wetness on the roofs, in the puddles and you have this funny sort of light when that happens where you've got this dark murky background sky here but you've got a bright sunny fields. So I'm going to get on with that and once I've done that we'll have another little chat. Right now you can see that I've just blobbed in and I mean blobbed in a few dark greens and top them off with some light yellowy greens and white here and there just to give an impression of the bushes either side of the lane. I'm not going to go into any great detail on that because this is all about creating the puddles. What I'm going to do next though is to just pick up on the house. Now there's a couple of things I want to mention about creating this atmosphere of a wet roof. First of all it's not just painting the roof on its own it's actually making sure that the other parts of the house are also painted light or dark to enhance this wet roof. Right, I've painted the house and again we'll have a look at uh, these little uh, devices we've used to create the light and the dark for the house uh, in the building's DVD. But what I've done is put the, the shadow side of the house because there's some watery sunlight coming across on this front edge or front wall but the important thing is that we've got this light roof and the reason we want the light roof is that the reflections are actually going to come down something like that. So if I just finish off by putting in just the hint of a door and perhaps a couple of windows like that. So I'm going to leave it at that for now because that does what I need it to do and no more. We're now going to come on to painting the lane itself and getting these puddles done. Right now you see the colours and sort of colours I'm mixing. It's mostly the raw umber. I've mixed some of the uh, glaze in which is uh, and the extender which is artificially lightened it for now. I've also thrown in some white paint and there's a little bit of ultramarine blue there. We'll put a little bit more in as we go along. But again, it's a mix that I'm simply spreading on the lane at this stage to get a sort of a base colour along. All I'm interested in is getting this mid-tone here, or which will be a relatively light tone when we uh, put a little bit of highlight in it, uh, to match what we did with the basic drawing. Okay, I've filled in most of the, uh, well pretty well all of the lane apart from the puddles with this sort of base colour that I've just described of raw sienna white and you can see that I've dragged the brush from side to side to give that sort of effect of the lane running down into ruts on either side of the centre. But now is the time to have a little bit of fun before we actually put the puddles and paint the puddles in place. I'm just going to get, uh, in fact I think what I'll do is I'll get the palette knife. I always like to have a bit of fun with the palette knife, some lovely gooey textures. So I'll just uh, pick that up and you can see that we've got white and brown. Let's throw a little bit of blue in there, for a little bit of variety. Let's have a little bit of Oh, cadmium red. You can see that all of this creates some lovely textures and I'm just slapping it on like that. But again, the beauty of this is this, if you want to, you can just scrape over what you've put in. Remember, we're going to put dark areas in the corner to force the eye inwards. I'm just going to darken this off in this area here to strengthen the foreground. 
just make sure that we roughly get where the tyre tracks are. Okay, just a little bit more there. Oh yes, that's fine. Okay, we're now going to concentrate on the puddles, but first of all, because this is fairly thick and gooey paint and because I'm going to be over it painting the puddles, I'm going to let this dry thoroughly. Right, before we go any further, what I'm just going to do now is to actually paint in the puddles, which is going to reflect the sky here. This, or these puddles here, are going to be sort of a bluey grey, whereas one or two of these over here are going to pick up a little bit of this slight brighter area in the sky. Again, I'm not worried too much about not going over the, the brown areas because we can go over and come back in with a bit of brown. If we go too far with the brown, we can come back in with a bit of uh, sky colour until we're absolutely satisfied that we've got everything right. Now on these bigger puddles, what I suggest you do is to paint, here I'm using the flat brush, but paint across because all water, as we know, should be flat and level. And by painting your brush strokes horizontally or as near horizontally as you can manage like that, you can go around the edge of the uh, puddle if you want a little bit like that. That's no problem. But once you're ready to just finish off, just go across like that with the flat brush. Right, I've just added some of that glaze to the raw umber because I'm going to now just paint in some of the tyre tracks that are going in and out of the puddles themselves. And the way we go about that is I think we'll start off here and we'll just bring a little bit of mud, a little bit of dirt in here and we'll just basically have it dis gradually disappearing. Now we get a little bit of that raw umber but we lighten it off with some conveniently placed white and yellow paint. Take off the excess and now we're starting to get these tyre tracks. Okay, I think you get the idea now of how this sort of thing uh, works. Right, well we've put in some more muddy tracks going in and out of the puddles and you can see I've filled in the fence post. I've just used raw umber white and a bit of uh, cadmium yellow for that. I'm just going to uh, bring across the shadows and the reason I'm doing that is it's often one thing that people get confused about with shadows and reflections in water. The shadows always go in the direction that the sun is. So in this case if the sun's down here on the left hand side it's going to push the shadows out this way. The shadow is going the way the sun is pointing. The reflection however is vertical and that because that post is sloping that way the reflection is going to go the opposite way if you remember. So we'll for the meantime we'll put this in here obviously missing that out there and coming up to about there. Let's have a look there's no there's a possibly a little bit in that puddle there Okay, we're now going to put in the dark colour, so we'll put that in like that. You can see there's still a light and a dark contrast, but not near as so pronounced as the light and the dark between that. Now, if that happens and you want to put in uh, a few more reflections, there's a very simple answer, because all that you need to do particularly in a muddy lane like this, is find a few 
grassy areas, little bits of grass growing through. They can even be growing through the uh, the water and the mud and the and the uh, the puddle itself. So we'll just manufacture with a little bit of dark green paint a few little bits and pieces like that. And I'm not going to do any more than that because I think you get the idea. Okay, so there we are. There is our puddles, our wet roof, and our sunny day that's appearing out of something that was really heavy rain. You can see incidentally by creating this sunny atmosphere and lots of shadows and uh, reflections that even the dull uh, sky in the background can still make things appear quite sunny. But I hope you've learned how easy it is to create these simple puddles and the muddy tracks that run through them and past them and above all Go and have some fun, get that palette knife going on this little exercise and see yourself creating a muddy track in no time at all. So there we are, wet roofs and puddles.